good morning. We're so glad that you can stream with us at Resurrection Lutheran Church here. And today is Trinity Sunday, so we get to worship our triune God who is in the midst of everything going on and is still bringing his peace and love to this nation. That's something we all want to keep in prayer right now. And so my name is Pastor Matt, and I'm so glad that you're streaming with us. And today we are continuing a series called Open Our Eyes. And we're looking at how we're to open our eyes to people around us in our community and share God's love with them. And so it's appropriate that this morning we're looking at a text from Matthew 28 in the Great Commission and talking about how we go, therefore, into this world with his love. So that's what we're looking at today. Just have a couple of announcements. The first announcement is that we are uh, working on meeting and discussing what it looks like for us to regather. And we're uh, talking through all the different requirements that the state has put out for us. And we're tentatively shooting for that, probably being uh, the first week of July, if everything goes according to plan of that uh, regathering. And service will look different. We'll give you more notes on that. The council is meeting on uh, this uh, tomorrow, actually, for you guys. It's Saturday here, but uh, Sunday for you guys. We'll be meeting tomorrow uh, to talk more about it. So please keep us in prayer for godly wisdom and care for all those decisions. And then also wanted to share with you that we're uh, going to continue to use our Zoom uh, ministry going forward, even when we do regather to do uh, Bible studies and other various meetings, uh, as there's not uh, recommending that we're in large groups yet. So things like Bible study, and we're even going to try to do some fellowship at various times, uh, sort of a coffee hour. Uh, will take place on Zoom. So if you need help with Zoom, we do have some Zoom mentors who can help with that. So just wanted to uh, share that with you. If you're interested in that, please reach out. Also wanted to mention that in phase two, uh, here in King County is when we will be uh, officially reopening the office uh, with Rachel coming back in. Uh, so we'll make an announcement of that, but just would still encourage you to use uh, email and phone as your primary method of communication and that if you do uh, come into uh, the church office, please observe social distancing uh, so we can keep everyone safe here on staff. And then finally, just wanted to mention uh, next week, we're gonna be continuing our series, uh, Open Our Eyes, and we're gonna be looking at how we see all the people. There's a lot of sites we're taking in right now and how do we see people with the love of Jesus? And what does that mean for our lives? And so that's what we'll be focusing on next week. Uh, today, though, like I said, we get to worship our triune God, a God who is holy, holy, holy. And so let us sing out. Shine. 
Yes, our God is holy, 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 and we worship this morning in the name of that triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In God, our Father, our Creator, who made the heavens and earth, we are your children, and we are in awe of all that you have made. Christ the Son, our Redeemer and Savior, You lived and died for us all. You live again and have prepared the way for us. Holy Spirit, the sustainer, you move in us and among us. We follow your wisdom and feel your presence. God, triune, three in one, help us to know you more fully. Guide us in this time of worship. Amen. And our Old Testament lesson for this morning comes to us from the book of Psalms, and it is Psalm 8. Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all the flocks and herds and animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish of the sea, all that swim in the paths of the seas. Lord, O Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. And at this time, we confess together, and normally we confess the Apostles' Creed, but uh, this week I found a confession of what we believe as the triune God, so that's what we confess together now. And we believe in God, the eternal Eternal Spirit, Spirit, Father Father of our Lord Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, and and our our Father, Father. and to his his deeds we testify. He calls the worlds into being. being creates man in his own image, and sets before him the ways of life and death. He seeks in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. He judges men and nations by his righteousness, and will declare through the prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Lord. He has come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death and reconciling the world to himself. He bestows upon us his Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the Church of Jesus Christ, binding in covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. He calls us into his church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be his servants in the service of men, to proclaim the gospel to all the world and resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. He promises to all who trust him forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, his presence in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in his kingdom, which has no end. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto him. Amen. And our second lesson from the New Testament book of 2 Corinthians is from chapter 13, verses 11 through 13. 
Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. And God's people here send their greetings. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And now we get to continue to worship our triune God as we sing out God Who's Almighty Word. hear the light of our gospel lesson this morning coming to us from Matthew 28, 16 through 20, and we know this as the Great Commission. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw them, when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, O Christ. There are times, though, when we do doubt, like even some of those disciples did, and we don't obey what the Lord has taught us, and so in those moments we need to confess, and so that's what we do now. And we confess this day, O merciful God, we have have not not always always acted acted in just just ways, ways, nor sought justice justice for our our friends friends and and neighbors. We have have found found it it easy easy to to turn turn our backs on problems problems, rather than than seeking seeking to be a solution to them. We have have heard of the many ways in which which you have demonstrated peace through the ministry ministry of your son, yet we have given given only sporadic attention attention to them. Forgive forgive us, Lord. Lord. Heal Heal our selfishness and brokenness. Open our our eyes and and cause us us to be witnesses to your your great great love as shown to us in Jesus Christ. 
So we now take a few moments of silence to ask the Lord to bring healing and reconciliation to our lives. And this is the good news. Christ died for us so we might have life. We are called to give our lives to ministries of peace, love, and justice. As he calls us to go, therefore, to minister in this world, go with all your sins forgiven in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. And as we sing out as a forgiven people, we sing all hail majestic trinity. our God from whom all blessings flow. What a powerful word we just sang and what a powerful word we're going to hear. And so let's start with that as a word of prayer. Oh Lord, we do thank you as our triune God that we praise you for all that you are. Lord, we praise you that you are a God who still sends disciples baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that you wash and clean lives every single day. Lord, we just ask your renewal to come over our country, that you would bring peace, that you would bring justice, that you'd bring an end to violence. And Lord, we just ask that uh, our meditations this morning could focus on you and how we can share your love in this world, how we can go, therefore, in the name of the triune God, to be your people of peace. So Lord, we just ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Open our eyes. Open our eyes. Yes, it is the name of our current sermon series, but this past week, we've opened our eyes to so much that has been going on in our nation, in the world around us. And we've opened our eyes to a lot of unrest, a lot of anger, 
a lot of hurt, and a lot of brokenness. We have had our eyes open to deep wounds of racism that have caused rifts that are just hurting and causing so much anguish in the lives that have been lost because of it. We have seen how in the midst of peaceful protest, there have been aims of bringing awareness to justice, which is a good thing, but in the midst of it, elements of destruction, of chaos have infiltrated it and caused even more damage and hurt. We as a nation are lamenting. We are hurting. And this has been one of the toughest weeks I can ever remember of one having to open our eyes and maybe watch the news or read the newspaper and everything that has been going on and living through it. The question then for us as Christians is how do we open our eyes to all of this and then respond? Thinking about this question myself a lot this past week, I came across this article about uh, the damage that has happened in the Chinatown neighborhood uh, up in Seattle. And this has been a particular hard hit neighborhood this this past year. You see, it's not only the, the first time that vandals have hit this neighborhood because right as everything with the coronavirus Uh, started to shut everything down, vandals hit the Chinatown neighborhood as well at that point because they felt we need to take this out and blame someone, so let's blame the Chinese folks who are living here. So they've had it hit multiple times, and that's a very sad thing. In the midst of all this pain, though, uh, one of the owners of one of the restaurants, and what you see on the screen is, is people coming, and that's what he was talking about, His restaurant is called Faux Bac, and his name is David Leong, and this is what he had to say. And it surprised him. He said, I was surprised to see some volunteers. It was unbelievable, black, white, and Asian, all kinds of people coming together to clean this part of the city. It gave me pure joy, he goes on to say, pure joy and happiness to see a multicolor group, people working together for the betterment of our community. And more on that, he then talked about what he saw as the key to healing. And this is what he said. I think tapping into human compassion is the key. Compassion from our government, compassion from our leaders, compassion from the protesters. Let's find that middle ground. I know we can do it. And I thought that that was amazing, that someone who had just had his restaurant vandalized was calling for compassion in the midst of chaos. And as we know, as Christians, though, we need more than just human compassion. We need the compassion of our triune God to make everlasting change. As Christian author Chad Bird uh, wrote this past week, We know that justice cannot heal our world, nor mere human love, but only God's love in Jesus Christ can heal our broken hearts, restore our shattered communities, and give us the grace to forgive even our enemies. And so this morning uh, on Trinity Sunday, I'm not going to give a sermon trying to describe the inner workings of the Trinity. That's impossible for who knows the ways of God. But rather, we see it's timely as we focus on our gospel lesson that Jesus is giving the disciples instructions. He's giving them actions to do in the name of the triune God. So it's not as much about describing God as describing what people are called to do in his name. It's about what the disciples and we will do in this world for him, having been commissioned been called and sent. It's about what we will do because we belong to Jesus. This is what we will open our eyes to and then go, therefore, to live out. And much like our nation is feeling broken, there's a reminder in this passage that there's brokenness as well. It's a very small uh, hint of it, but we see it towards the beginning. We might not even pick up on it, but We see throughout the Gospels, 
that Jesus is mentoring, sending, and ministering to how many disciples? Twelve. But then where do we start our gospel lesson to, for today with this phrase? Then the eleven disciples. There's that word, eleven. Eleven is a sign, a symbol of brokenness. As we think of Judas and betrayal and failure and loss of life. It's a reminder that on our own, without the sustaining presence of the triune God, we won't make it. Our numbers break down, and then there were 11. Without him, we won't fulfill this mission or any calling. Thankfully, though, for those 11, there is still hope. There is still hope, and we see that this hope starts in the very next phrase as it says that those 11, they went to Galilee, to the mountain, where Jesus had told them to go. And that's the key phrase right there. They go home to Galilee, not in despair, but Matthew mentions they were directed. They went where Jesus told them to go. They were still following their Lord. They were still listening to his word. And so that's the same for us. There's still hope in the midst of brokenness because we can still follow his word. We can follow in our failure. We can follow in the midst of betrayal. When we deny in our brokenness and our weakness, there's forgiveness and we can still follow and listen to the Lord. And then we can go and listen to our neighbors around us. We are called, therefore, to go and make disciples. And a huge part of disciple making is relationship building. We see Jesus doing that throughout the Gospels. He builds relationships with the disciples. And a critical part of building relationships we all know is listening. Is listening to others. And this past week, I uh, read a statement put forth by the Black Clergy Caucus of the LCMS, written by a brother pastor I know whose name is uh, Pastor Warren Lattimore, Jr. And they make a call in this statement to go, therefore, to our neighbors who are black and of different races to go and care. And one of the points he makes is to go and listen. And I'm going to share a bit of it uh, with you, but I would encourage you to go and read it for yourself. It's a really helpful document, and I'll share a link of it for the church. Anyways, part of the section of listening he starts with, he actually uses the words of our brother Diedrich Bonhoeffer in his work, Life Together, in speaking to listening. And I'll start with that quote and then go on to what he has to say. And this is what Bonhoeffer says. As love of God begins with listening to his word, so the beginning of love for the brethren is learning to listen to them, to listen to them. It is God's love for us that he not only gives us his word, but also lends us his ear. Many people are looking for an ear that will listen. They do not find it among Christians because these Christians are talking where they should be listening. This is the beginning of the death of the spiritual life, he goes on to say. And in the end, there is nothing left but spiritual chatter and clerical condensation arrayed in pious words. One who cannot listen long and patiently will be presently be talking beside the point. Anyone who thinks that his time is too valuable to spend keeping quiet will eventually have no time for God and his brother, but only for himself and his own follies. Those are tough words to hear that, you know, if we're not listening, it can really be hurtful to others and to the church as well. And Pastor Lattimore goes on and says this, I encourage you to read more, to learn more, to listen more, to black pastors and laity, to black authors, to black musicians, to black store owners, to people you do normally not, 
with a heart that listens to understand. So often what divides us is a defensive heart born of anger, fear, or pride. But as brothers and sisters in Christ, God says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you a heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. This world is unable to solve the problems that vex us, but God is able. The world may seek to tear us apart, but God is able to knit us together in love. This world may test our patience, but God is able to give us a peace that surpasses all understanding. So we listen to God's word, and then we listen to our neighbors. And as we read on in the passage, we see uh, our gospel text, we see that this is done not just on our own. We see that there's an authority that we follow. And it is our Lord Jesus Christ, as he proclaims, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Christ died and rose to save people from every nation, race, and tongue. Obedience to the Great Commission isn't a man-made program. It isn't done in our own willpower that leads us to go. It's Jesus' authority that compels us to go. We go under his banner in his strength. However, we don't go reluctantly when we do that, as if we're just being forced to follow a king. We go because he is worthy, and his worth, it fuels our mission. His worth is what gives us the strength to go. We go, therefore, with his authority and power in us, but also we understand in that power, there's compassion, there's love for the people that he died for, the people he saved. We live for the day when all people will give him the glory that he is due. So what then are we to do, therefore, as we go? Well, there's a fourfold mission laid out in his word. And the first thing we do, like we mentioned earlier, is we make disciples. And we could do a whole series on this, of course, right? How to make disciples. But to give a brief overview of what it is, I mentioned part of it. It's an invitation to create relationships, to build people up, to invest time in them, to engage with the world so we can show them and help people see the world as it should be in our Savior. It doesn't mean that we just go and give a tract and move on. It means that we are in it for the long haul, caring and listening to others. Jesus doesn't say, go and win souls. He says, go and make disciples. Souls will be won in the process of that going on. Don't worry about that. But we are not the ones doing the soul winning. Jesus is. We are doing the disciple making. And then as we make disciples, we're called to baptize. We're called to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And this is the place where the relationship with the triune God finds the sinful old self being drowned down, being washed away, and a new person rising in resurrection life to a lifelong formation in their risen Savior. And what we do as a community is we don't just baptize, we celebrate in baptismal community. We come together and celebrate what takes place in the larger church when that happens. We celebrate what the triune God is doing, how there is more rejoicing in one lost sinner found than all the others. And so we rejoice in that. Let there be joy when anyone starts that journey. And let there be a promise of the church to support, to care, and invest in those baptismal children in that journey. And what we do in that next step then is we teach. We grow people and we teach them. Jesus taught his disciples all the time with examples right around them. 
So as we learn from the world, we also are able to be taught by uh, pastors, by spiritual leaders with examples that are going on around us. We know right now in society is a teachable moment. How do we respond to others? Like I said, listening is a big part of that. We need to be taught how to listen. And one thing we have to do also as we listen is be able to, when we are called to speak, give an answer, give a reason for the hope that we have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Teaching people to obey the command Jesus gives us is an awesome responsibility and privilege. And sometimes it can be tough when the truth is hard. But we can celebrate because we have been given the ability to speak the truth in love. We can celebrate because keeping God's word is a treasure to share. It is the key that unlocks all of life's mysteries. It is the way to eternal life to give the ultimate wisdom, some insight, some joy, and some hope that we have received from Jesus is the ultimate thing we can share. He wants us to give those teachings away. What sustains us? And what is it that he taught his disciples? What is it he commanded them? Love one another. Love one another as I have loved you. That's the command that we teach others to keep by living it out with gentleness and respect. And we also have to be reminded that we have to continue to have teachable spirits in the midst of it, that God continues to teach us and others in the community can teach us that we can grow in insight and compassion. And then the last part of our four, fourfold process is to remember. Now that might sound counterintuitive or I might think, well, how does that tie in? But look at the international standard version sometime in verse 20 at the very end of Matthew, and it puts it this way, and remember, and remember I am with you each and every day until the end of the age. And so we go and we remember that we are not alone in this. We remember that the triune God is with us. Only by his presence can we put one foot in front of the other. Remember that. Only by his presence can we issue one more invitation. Can we care for one more soul, for one more neighbor, remembering what the Lord has done for us. We remember and we are not alone. And we remember and go because the triune God has remembered us and goes forth ahead of us. We see this all the way back at the beginning of creation. The Father knew what would happen, how Adam and Eve would fall into sin. The Father knew he would have to give his firstborn son over to be killed. And yet he still therefore went, he still went and created this world. He creates the universe and creates us in his image. He still goes before us. He loves us and gives us grace and forgiveness and allows people of every tribe and race to be called children of God. And we see that this happens because the sun goes. The sun goes, even though he lived a perfect life without any sin, he still goes, therefore, to the cross so that we would be saved. And now as he is risen, he gives all authority to go out in his name. And we do not go alone because he has remembered to send us a helper who goes out in front of us through our lives and our houses to sanctify and purify this world. And that helper is our Holy Spirit. We go, therefore, to open our eyes, open our eyes to see all the people, we open our ears to listen and hear all the people. And last but not least, we open our hearts to love all the people of all nations and all backgrounds. And that's what we're going to look at over the next three weeks. Three, it's appropriate we're doing that in that amount of time because we worship 
we continue to praise the Lord and go forth this day in the name of our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And let us pray. O oh, triune God, we ask that you would surround this country and cover us with your mighty hand. We pray for unity in our land, that in spite of our differences, we would be willing to stand strong together and live out our days with your compassion and grace. We ask that no weapon formed against us would prosper and that you would thwart the attacks of Satan hurled our way. We thank you that you are rich in mercy and full of grace. Thank you that you are forgiving and merciful. Thank you that you are strong and mighty. Thank you that you are for us and that you fight for us still today and that you unify people in love. Thank you that you give us your power, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to go therefore and make disciples of all nations. And in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for continuing to uh, be along for the ride in this live stream. Just pray God's continued blessings over you. And I just want to continue to thank you for the blessings you continue to provide for us as a church and supporting the ministry here at Resurrection. And we just ask that uh, you continue to support us. And we thank you so much through your tithes and your offerings. And just uh, to continue to remind you, you can either mail in those tithes and offerings and we're checking the mailbox daily to make sure uh, it's brought in safely or also you can give online to uh, our at our website and there's a button there at resurrection-lcms.org that has the words give to RLC and you can click on that and give that way. So just want to thank you for that continued support as we now continue to worship our triune God. I invite you to join me in singing songs of praise to our triune God. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing. Oh, praise Him. Hallelujah. Thou burning sun with golden beam. Thou silver moon with softer gleam, oh, praise Him, oh, praise Him, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thou rushing wind that are so strong, ye clouds that sail in heaven along. him in humbleness. Oh, praise him. Hallelujah. Praise, praise the Father, praise the Son, and praise the Spirit, three in one. Oh, praise him. Oh, praise him. Hallelujah. Praise the Son and praise the Spirit three in one. Oh, praise Him, oh, praise Him. Hallelujah, Alleluia, Alleluia.
O sovereign God, O matchless King, the saints adore, the angels sing, and fall before the throne of grace. To you belongs the highest praise. These sufferings, this passing tide, under your wings I will abide, and every enemy shall flee. You are my hope and victory. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, clothed in power. made me whole. Your word my heart has welcomed home. Now peace like water ever flows. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, clothed in power and in grace. The name of Yes, our triune God, we thank you that your name is the one above all other names. And we thank you that you give an ear to listen to us this morning as we lift our prayers to you. And so let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. And Lord, our triune God, we thank you that you are one who goes ahead of us with power, salvation, and grace. May we dwell in you this day, then go into a world that so desperately needs your love. You call us to be your light in the darkness, your voice in the wilderness, your hope for the hopeless. You give us strength in our weakness, peace and gentleness, words and boldness to proclaim more of you and less of us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we thank you for the gift of marriage and the marriages in our church. And we pray blessings over all of them for your strength and joy. We especially lift up to you, Ron and Janet Collins, who celebrated their uh, anniversary this past week. And we lift up to you the Griffiths, Sullivans, and Gherkins as they all celebrate anniversaries this coming week. What a joy to be able to celebrate with a husband or wife, love, 
care and dedication over all these years. Lord, in your mercy, hear our You're prayer. Welcome. And Lord, we give you thanks for our neighbors, our neighborhoods, and the relationships we can grow in them. Bless us with ears quick to listen to our neighbors with love and compassion. Allow us opportunities to grow in relationship and life together. And bless us with moments to share your love in deeds and words. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And loving God, your desire is for wholeness and well-being to come to us. And so we hold in tenderness and prayer the collective suffering of our world at this time. We grieve precious lives, lives, and vulnerable lives threatened. We ache for ourselves and our neighbors, standing before an uncertain future. We pray that love and not fear would go viral. Inspire our leaders to discern and choose wisely aligned with the common good of your gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our hear prayer. prayer. And Lord, we ask that you would lift up the Garrison family, close friends of John and Sharon Lambeth and Melina as well, as they grieve the unexpected loss of Russ, a husband, father, and grandfather at 60 years old to a sudden heart attack. We ask you, Lord, to be their consolation, a shoulder to cry on, and that your arms of hope, love, and promise of their res resurrection would surround them and all who mourn Russ right now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our hear prayer. prayer. And Lord, we pray for our fractured <clears throat> nation that there would be unity. We pray that protests would be peaceful and that bridges would be built instead of destroyed in our community. We pray that your peace would quell the violence and that in your power and love, the evils of hatred and racism would be eradicated. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we ask your healing over all in our midst who are ill and in need of healing. We especially lift up to our sister in Christ, Shirley Hogue, who's uh, in so much pain and suffering because of the chemotherapy she's undergoing. Lord, we just pray that you would fully remove all of her cancer, that you would bring her relief from pain and just fully restore her. And may we just wrap our arms around her and love her and let her know she is not alone. And for all people who are ill, we pray for restoration, wholeness, comfort, and your joy in all they do. We also ask for wisdom for doctors as they treat our loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. And at this time, we'll take a couple moments of silence where you can lift up any prayers on your hearts uh, to the Lord in your homes right now. Or if there's something you want us to pray over, take some time now and begin to type that in and uh, we will pray over it through the rest of service as you get that up. So we'll do that now. And lifting up all these prayers spoken and unspoken into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead, and lead us, us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power, and the, power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning in your homes. Know that we miss you, that we love you, and are praying over you in all that you do. 
And as you do live this week, go therefore. Go into the day knowing your life has been touched by the triune God. You are cleansed by the mercy of the Father. You are surrounded by the love of Christ. And you are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit to go and share his love. Amen. And now let us sing out with joy how great is our God. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide it trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Therefore, in the peace of our triune God, serving him. Amen. Amen.